Good evening and welcome. This is our Wednesday, April 20, 2016 edition of the Government News Brief. In the news, Linden Municipality's development may be hampered by a $200 million inherited debt, traffic chief calls for adherence to safety laws to reduce road accidents, and May 11 is Social Cohesion Day. Stay tuned for the details of these and other stories. Thank you for staying with us. I am Azim Khan and this is the Government News Brief. The traffic chief says disregard for safety and law continues to be a major cause of road accidents. Details in this report. Acting Traffic Chief Guyana Police Force Boudin Ryan Passad in an interview with the Government Information Agency says non-observance of safety measures is a major contributor to road accidents. Thus far this year, 10 motorcyclists and 3 pillar riders have been killed in accidents. It would have resulted from some, some degree of recklessness because um, in some cases they were speeding, in some cases alcohol were involved, and then in most, most of the time they were not wearing safety helmets. And if they were doing so, it was not strapped properly because most times you would find they die from multiple injuries. The so traffic chief referred to recent road accidents. A recent motorcycle accident we could have recalled um, one at Grove where a cyclist was riding at a fast rate, he lost control, fell off his motorcycle and skid into a parked motor vehicle. Causing his death, he wasn't wearing a helmet. In Mocha, another young motorcyclist was riding into Mocha. He collided with a horse. He was also not wearing a safety helmet. However, efforts are being made to curb the situation. Well, we have this ongoing speeding exercise. We're using the radar gun and the breathalyzer campaign. Um, the, the, the alcohol campaign we're using the breathalyzer machine. So far for the year, we have prosecuted 8,104 days of the yesterday, drivers for speeding, and 656 drivers for use of alcohol. Passat is urging all road users to think safety. Further, the traffic chief says that there has been an increase in deaths overall in 2016 compared to the same period in 2015. From January to April of 2016, there were 38 accidents with 39 deaths in comparison to 22 accidents and 31 deaths in 2015. Isaiah Brafitt, Government News Brief. Efforts of the newly elected mayor and councillors of Linden to develop the municipality may be hampered by an inherited $200 million debt. Find out more in this report. The Linden Mayor and Town Council has a new face and have gotten off to a fresh start. But Mayor Carwin Holland may be stuck with some of the same old problems. This transition phase, it's, it's a very tough one because we inherited a, a municipality with a debt of over, over $200 million. We, we're in the red. And um, besides that, we are inheriting a township in which the people are severely battered by the many, the difficult paths of recent. Holland says that his immediate plans are to correct these shortcomings and set up a better system to manage the municipality. We now have to work with the mindset of people to let persons know that you have a chance to make things better not only for Linden but for the entire Guyana. Linden is no shorting of human resource nor natural resource but um, it's the system which was set before that was severely hampering development in this town. And we need to change all of this. We need to change um, the way people see Linden. The council will also be addressing the issues of garbage collection, implementing a new system of tax collection, and regularizing the new housing areas in Linden. So I'm happy that I am in place. I'm happy that we have a group of councillors who are willing to work for the betterment of this tongue and not for their own um, self, you know, for, not for themselves. But they are willingly uh, putting out their efforts out there to see better men come to one and all. And I'm just thankful that we have an opportunity now to move Linden forward and to change, move this tongue. For too long we've been under this township and uh, it's time Linden moved from a township to a city. President David Granger recently urged the residents and newly elected officials to rebuild the town's economy on the four pillars of investment, information, infrastructure and innovation. 
Linden, at one period of time, contributed significantly to the country's economic growth through bauxite exports. However, over the years, the town has experienced financial downturns, which has retarded growth and development. For this government news brief, I'm the Mela Baines Rowe. Over 35 bands are expected to be a part of the 50th Jubilee Costume and Float Parade on Thursday, May 26, when Guyanese will celebrate the country's 50th independence anniversary. The bands will also travel a new route, from the customary one taken for the annual Mashramani and Float Parade. The parade will kick off at the usual starting point, Church and Camp Streets, at 10 hours. It will then proceed west onto Church Street into Avenue of the Republic, then onto Brick Dam, and then straight into the Jubilee Park or Durban Park for the final round of judging. The designers, companies, ministries, regional representatives and other participating entities are looking at the five decades of Guyana from different perspectives as it relates to the concept and designs of the floats and bands. All the participating entities will seek to capture the theme of the 50th celebration, reflect, celebrate and inspire. Minister Keith Scott commits to engaging the Attorney General on the issue of arbitration proceedings between Russell and the Guyana Bauxite and General Workers Union. Here is that story. This commitment was made during a meeting with the executives of the Guyana Bauxite and General Workers Union and Minister within the Ministry of Social Protection, Keith Scott, during the discussion about the ongoing controversy between Russell Bauxite Company and the union. The GB and GWU is asking for the government to implement the arbitration proceedings into the Russian company's industrial unrest. Minister Scott has committed to engaging the Attorney General Basil Williams on the issue. I will re-engage with the Attorney General so as to see where it is in terms of the law. Thank you, Mr. Minister. And uh, I will get back to you subsequently. General Secretary of the GB and GWU, Lincoln Lewis, pointed out that the issue was taken to the High Court in 2012, but the arbitration was blocked. Lewis says the arbitration is in the accordance with the law and is in the best interest of the workers. What we are asking for, Minister, is for the arbitration to go ahead, and the appointment of the arbitrator, and so forth. And the, matter, the matters that are there is not only the dismissal of those people in 2009. It, has, it goes back to the 67 <coughs> workers who were suspended in May of 2009. It goes to the, it goes to the core of collective bargaining where for, for a renewal of a new contract. In December 2009, 57 workers who were engaged in a strike action for improved working conditions and increased wages were dismissed and others suspended. The union spoke out against this action, and the then Minister of Labour, Nando Gopal, sent the GB and GWU and the Russell Bauxite Company's dispute to arbitration. Minister Scott recently met with officials of the Russian Bauxite Company, Russell, to discuss work-related issues that have been in the public's domain since 2009. For the Government News Brief, Seneca Thorne reporting. <laughs> May 11, 2016 has been designated Social Cohesion Day. Social Cohesion Minister Amna Ali believes that Guyanese are willing to embrace change and national unity. This, she says, has been the feedback from her interactions with Guyanese over the past months. The people out there, they want social cohesion. They are fed up with a group of people or uh, a section of, of, of society dividing the Guyanese people. They want us to work together. And I can tell you that they are responding greatly to social cohesion. And, and we have had, a, in our sensitization programs, I can tell you, in every region, we have had successes at our initiative. You can see the response from them that they want this social cohesion. They want this working together. They are seeing the benefits that working together will give to them. Minister of Social Cohesion, Amna Ali. The Ministry of Social Cohesion continues to engage Guyanese in its quest to create a unified society. 
Several activities will be held in schools across Region 3 as a pilot project using the education system to bring about social cohesion. April 29 has been designated Unity Day under the theme Culture Up One Guyana. It aims to assist young people to understand the process of building a cohesive society. Savannah Park residents get new main access road. Details in this report. Residents of Savannah Park, New Amsterdam, are now enjoying better access to their homes and communities with the rehabilitation of the main access road. This project was completed by the Region 6 administration from their 2015 budget. Thomas Trim, a resident of Savannah Park, spoke about the newly rehabilitated road. Well, what is been done and the efforts that have been placed in it is commendable. Right? I have no other comments to make except in that we appreciate it because what wasn't done in 24 and 30 years ago has been done. But Gordon Chase, another resident, was happy. It's a nice road. I'm glad of it, right? And he, uh, I'm a resident in this arm. Um, you hear Savannah Park feel well pleased because it was, it was a bad road a long time, right? And now we see improvements, so it's a better road, and we're glad for it. About $5.8 billion was allocated in the 2016 budget for major developmental works in Region 6. Some of the other projects completed from the 2016 budget include Smithfield Cross Street, New Amsterdam, Cumminsville Main Entrance, and Number 74 Middle Walk Dam. Invitation for bids have been published for works on several projects, including Number 68, Port Morant, and Albion Primary Schools. Bushlot Nursery and Burby's High School Fences, Number 47, WIM, and Eversham Health Centers, among others. Renetta LaFleur, Government News Brief. We have come to the end of this edition of the Government News Brief. You can find the details of these and other stories on Gina's website. We encourage you to subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. You can also like and follow us on Facebook so you can be informed as the news unfolds. Do join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. Thank you for watching.